for it is not lawful that anything that is of another and inferior kind and nature, be it what it will, as either popular applause, or honor, or riches, or pleasure, for all these things, if once though but for a while, they begin to please, they presently prevail, and pervert a man's mind, or turn a man from the right way. Do thou therefore, I say, absolutely and freely make choice of that which is best, and stick unto it. Now, that they say is best, which is most profitable. If they mean profitable to man as he is a rational man, stand thou to it and maintain it. But if they mean profitable as he is a creature, only reject it. And from vie, never esteem of anything as profitable, which shall ever constrain thee either to break thy faith or to lose thy modesty, to hate any man to suspect, to curse to dissemble, but he that prefereth before all things his rational part and spirit, and the sacred mysteries of virtue which issueth from it, he shall never lament and exclaim, never sigh. He shall never want, and as for life, whether for a long or short time he shall enjoy his soul thus compassed about with a body, he is altogether indifferent. For if even now he were to depart, he is as ready for it as for any other action, which may be performed with modesty and decency for all his life long. This is his only care, that his mind may always be occupied in such intentions and objects as are proper to a rational sociable creature. X. In the mind that is once truly disciplined and purged, thou canst not find anything, either foul or impure, or as it were festered. Nothing that is either servile. The life of such an one death can never surprise as imperfect as of an actor, that should die before he had ended, or the play itself were at an end, a man might use is thine opinative faculty with all honor and respect, for in her indeed is all, that thy opinion do not beget in thy understanding anything contrary to either nature, or the proper con the end and object of a rational constitution is to do nothing rashly, to be kindly affected towards men, and in all things willingly to submit unto the gods. Casting, therefore, all other things aside, keep thyself to these few, and remember withal that no man properly can be said to live more than that which is now present, which is but a whatsoever is besides either is already past or uncertain. The time, therefore, that any man doth live is but a little, and the place where he live is but a very little corner of the earth and the greatest fame that can remain of a man after his sigh. To these ever-present helps and mementos, let one more be added, ever to make a particular description and delineation, as it were of every object that presents itself to them. For there is nothing so effectual to beget true magnanimity, as to be able truly and methodically to examine and consider all things that happen in this life, and so to penetrate into their natures. What is this? that now my fancy is set upon. Of what things doth it consist? How long can it last? Which of all the virtues is the proper virtue? For th and as for this, it proceeds from my neighbor, my kinsman, my fellow, through his ignorance indeed, because he knows not what is truly natural unto him. But I know, as for those things that of themselves are altogether indifferent, as in my best judgment I conceive everything to deserve more or less, so I carry myself towards it. Kaye, if thou shalt intend that which is present, following the rule of right and reason carefully, solidly, meekly, and shalt not intermix any other businesses, but shall study this only to perceive, as physicians and chirurgeons have always their instruments ready at hand for all sudden cures so have thou always thy dogmata in a readiness for the knowledge of things, both divine and human. For without relation unto God, thou shalt never speed in any worldly actions, nor on the other side in any divine, without some respect had to things human. <laughs> Be not deceived, for thou shalt never live to read thy moral commentaries, nor the acts of the famous Romans and Gratians nor those excerpta from several books. All hastened therefore to an end, and giving over all vain hopes, 
help thyself in time if thou carest for thyself, as thou oughtest to do. Buffet. To steal, to sow, to buy, to be at rest, to see what is to be done, which is not seen by the eyes, but by another kind of sight. What these words mean, and how many the body, the soul, the understanding. As the senses naturally belong to the body, and the desires and affections to the soul, so do the dogmata to the understanding. Thy, to be capable of fancies and imaginations, is common to man and beast. To be violently drawn and moved by the lusts and desires of the soul is proper to wild beasts and monsters, such as phalaris and narrow work. To follow reason for ordinary duties and actions is common to them also, who believe not that there be any gods, and for their advantage would make no conscience to betray their own country. And if therefore all things else be common to these likewise, it follows that for a man to like and embrace all things that happen and are destinated unto him, and not to trouble and molest that and such a one, though no man should believe that he live as he doth, either sincerely and conscionably, or cheerful and contentedly. Yet is he neither with any man at all. The fourth book I, that inward mistress part of man, if it be in its own true natural temper, is towards all worldly chances and events ever so disposed and affected, that it will easily turn and apply itself, for it never doth absolutely addict and apply itself to any one object but whatsoever it is that it doth now intend and prosecute, it doth prosecute it with exception, even as the fire when it prevails upon those things that are in his way, by which things indeed a little fire would have been quenched, but a great fire doth soon turn to its own nature. And so, I, let nothing be done rashly, and at random, but all things according to the most exact and perfect rules of art. I, they seek for themselves private retiring places, as country villages, the seashore, mountains. Ye thou thyself art wont to long much after such places. But all this thou must know proceeds from simplicity in the highest degree. At what time soever thou wilt, it is in thy power to retire into thyself, and to be at rest, and free from all businesses. A man cannot any whither retire better than to his own soul. He especially who is beforehand provided of such things within, which whensoever he doth withdraw himself to look in, by tranquillity I understand a decent orderly disposition and carriage, free from all confusion and tumultuousness. Afford then thyself this retiring continually, and thereby refresh and renew thyself. Let these precepts be brief and fundamental, which as soon as thou dost call them to mind, may suffice thee to purge thy soul throughly, and to send thee away well pleased with those things for what is it that thou art offended at, can it be at the wickedness of men, when thou dost call to mind this conclusion, that all reasonable creatures are made one for another, and that it is part of just as for the other the as of as of the among other things, which to consider, and look into thou must use to withdraw thyself, let those to be among the most obvious and at hand. 1. That the things or objects themselves reach not unto the soul, but stand without still and quiet, and that it is from the opinion only which is within, that all the tumult and all the tr the next, that all these things which now thou seest, shall within a very little while be changed, and be no more, and ever call to mind how many changes and alterations in the world thou this world is mere change, and this life, opinion. If, if to understand and to be reasonable be common unto all men, then is that reason, for which we are termed reasonable, common unto all. If reason is general, then is that reason also which prescribeth what is to be done and what not, common unto all. If that, then law. If law, then are we fellow citizens. If so, then are we partners in some one common weal. If so, then the world is as it were a city. For which other common weal is it, that all men can be said to be members of? From this common city it is, that understanding, reason, 
and law is derived unto us for from whence the as generation is so also death a secret of nature's wisdom a mixture of elements resolved into the same elements again a thing surely which no man ought to be vi such and such things from such and such causes must of necessity proceed he that would not have such things to happen is as he that would have the fig tree grow without any sap or moisture in sum remember this that within a very little while both thou and he shall both be dead and after a little while more not so much as your names and memories shall be remaining vi let opinion be taken away and no man will think himself wronged if no man shall think himself wronged then is there no more any such thing as wrong that which makes not man himself the worse cannot make his life the worse neither can it hurt him either inwardly or outwardly it was expedient in nature that it should be so and therefore necessary vie whatsoever doth happen in the world doth happen justly and so if thou dost well take heed thou shalt find it i say not only in right order by a series of inevitable consequences but according to justice and as it were by way of equal distribution according to the true worth of everything continue then to take notice of it as thou hast begun and whatsoever thou dost do it not without this proviso that it be a thing of that nature that a good man as the word good is pro this observe carefully in every action x conceit no such things as he that wrongeth thee conceiveth or would have thee to conceive but look into the matter itself and see what it is in very truth t these two rules thou must have always in a readiness first do nothing at all but what reason proceeding from that regal and supreme part shall for the good and benefit of men suggest unto thee and secondly if any man that is present shall be able to rectify thee or to turn thee from some erroneous persuasion that thou be always ready to change thy mind and this change to proceed sigh hast thou reason i have why then makest thou not use of it for if thy reason do her part what more canst thou require kai as a part hitherto thou hast had a particular subsistence and now shalt thou vanish away into the common substance of him who first begot thee or rather thou shalt be resumed again many small pieces of frankincense are set upon the same altar one drops first and is consumed another after and it comes all to one Kai, within ten days if so happen thou shalt be esteemed a god of them who now if thou shalt return to the dogmata and to the honouring of reason will esteem of thee no better than of a tiv not as though thou hadst thousands of years to live death hangs over thee whilst yet thou livest whilst thou mayest be good Pfft. now much time and leisure doth he gain who is not curious to know what his neighbour hath said or hath done or hath attempted but only what he doth himself that it hey. he who is greedy of credit and reputation after his death doth not consider that they themselves by whom he is remembered shall soon after every one of them be dead but suppose that both they that shall remember thee and thy memory with them should be immortal what is that to thee i will not say to thee after thou art dead but even to thee living what is for as for that that it is the gift of nature whatsoever is commended in thee what might be objected from thence let that now that we are upon another consideration be omitted that which is fair and goodly whatsoever it be and in what respect soever it be that it is fair and goodly it is so of itself and terminates in itself not admitting praise at this i understand even of those things that are commonly called fair and good as those which are commended either for the matter itself or for curious workmanship as for that which is truly good what can it stand in need of more than either justice or truth or more than either kindness and modesty which of all those either become
if so be that the souls remain after death say they that will not believe it how is the air from all eternity able to contain them how is the earth say oh, this upon a supposition that the souls after death do for a while subsist single may be answered and here besides the number of bodies so buried and contained by the earth we may further consider the number of several beasts eaten by us men and by other creatures for notwithstanding that such a multitude of them is daily consumed and as it were buried in the bodies of the eaters yet is the same place and body able to contain them by reason of their what in these things is the speculation of truth to divide things into that which is passive and material and that which is active and formal flying not to wander out of the way but upon every motion and desire to perform that which is just and ever to be careful to attain to the true natural apprehension of every fa six whatsoever is expedient unto thee o world is expedient unto me nothing can either be unseasonable unto me or out of date which unto thee is seasonable whatsoever thy seasons bear shall ever by me be esteemed as happy fruit and increase o nature from thee are all things in thee all things subsist and to the all tent could he say of events thou lovely city of Cecrops, and shalt not thou say of the world thou lovely city of god Kika? they will say commonly meddle not with many things if thou wilt live cheerfully certainly there is nothing better than for a man to confine himself to necessary actions to such and so many only is reason in a creature that knows itself born for society this will not only procure that cheerfulness which from the goodness but that also which from the paucity of actions doth usually proceed for since it is so that most of those things which we either speak or do are unnecessary if a man shall cut them off it must needs follow that he shall there cut try also how a good man's life of one who is well pleased with those things whatsoever which among the common changes and chances of this world fall to his own lot and share thou hast had experience of that other kind of life make now trial of this also trouble not thyself any more henceforth reduce thyself unto perfect simplicity doth any man offend it is against himself that he doth offend why should it trouble thee hath anything happened unto thee it is well whatsoever it be to comprehend all in a few words our life is short we must endeavor to gain the present time with best discretion and justice use recreation with sobriety Fine. either this world is a cosmos or comely peace because all disposed and governed by certain order or if it be a mixture though confused yet still it is a comely peace for is it possible that in thee there should be any beauty at all and that in the whole world there should be nothing but disorder and confusion and all things in it too by natural different property a black or malign disposition an effeminate disposition and hard inexorable disposition a wild and human disposition a sheepish disposition a child he is a true fugitive that flies from reason by which men are sociable he blind who cannot see with the eyes of his understanding he poor that stands in need of another and hath not in himself all things needful for this life he in a posteem of the world who by being discontented with those things that happen unto him in the world doth as it were apostatize and separate himself from common nature's rational administration for the same nature is that brings this unto thee whatsoever it be that first brought thee into the world he raises sedition in the city who by irrational actions withdraws his own soul from that one and common soul of all rational creatures there is who without so much as a coat and there is who without so much as a book doth put philosophy in practice i am half naked, neither have i bread to eat and yet i depart not from reason saith one but i say i want the food of good teaching and instructions and yet i depart not from reason Exfy. 
what art and profession soever thou hast learned, endeavor to effect it, and comfort thyself in it, and pass the remainder of thy life as one who from his whole heart commits himself and whatsoever. Ea. Consider in my mind. For example's sake, the times of Vespasian, thou shalt see but the same things. Some marrying, some bringing up children, some sick, and is not that their age quite over and ended. Again, consider now the times of Trajan. There likewise thou seest the very self same things, and that age also is now over and ended. In the like manner consider other periods, both of times and of whole nations, and see how many men, after they had with all their might and main intended and prosecuted some one worldly, but especially thou must call to mind them, whom thou thyself in thy lifetime hast known much distracted about vain things, and in the meantime neglecting to do that, and closely and unsepar. And here thou must remember that thy carriage in every business must be according to the worth and due proportion of it, for so shalt thou not easily be tired out and vexed, if thou shalt not dwell Kvie. Those words which once were common and ordinary are now become obscure and obsolete, and so the names of men once commonly known and famous are now become in a manner obscure and obsolete. Camillus, Caso Valesius, Leonitus, not long after, Scipio, Cato, then Augustus, then Adrianus, then Antonius, and this I say of them, who once shined as the wonders of their ages, for as for the rest, no sooner are they expired, than with them all their fame and memory. And what is it then that shall always be remembered? All is vanity. What is it that we must bestow our care and diligence upon, even upon this only, that our minds and wills be just, that our actions be charitable, that our speech be never deceitful? Willingly, therefore, and wholly surrender up thyself unto that fatal concatenation, yielding up thyself unto the fates, to be disposed of at their pleasure. 6. Whatsoever is now present, and from day to day hath its existence, all objects of memories, and the minds and memories themselves incessantly consider all things that use thyself therefore often to meditate upon this, that the nature of the universe delights in nothing more than in altering those things that are, and in making others like unto them, so that we may say that whatsoever is is but as it were the seed of that which shall be. For if thou think that that only is seed, which either the earth or the womb receive, Thou art very simple. Thou art now ready to die, and yet hast thou not attained to that perfect simplicity. Thou art yet subject to many troubles and perturbations, not yet free from pexing. Behold and observe what is the state of their rational part, and those that the world doth account wise, see what things they fly and are afraid of, and what things they hunt after. Sigh. In another man's mind and understanding thy evil cannot subsist, nor in any proper temper or distemper of the natural constitution of thy body, which is but as it were the coat or cottage of thy wherein then, but in that part of thee, wherein the conceit and apprehension of any misery can subsist, let not that part therefore admit any such conceit, and then all is well, though thy body which is so near it should either be cut or burnt or suffer any corruption or putrefaction, yet let that part to which it belongs to judge of these be still at rest. For that which happens equally to him that lives according to nature, and to him that doth not, is neither according to nature, nor against it, and by consequent, neither ever consider and think upon the world as being but one living substance, and having but one soul, and how all things in the world are terminated into one sensitive power, and are passive. What art thou, that better and divine part accepted, but as Epictetus said well, a wretched soul, appointed to carry a carcass up and down, kex, to suffer change can be no hurt, as no benefit it is, by change to attain to being. The age and time of the world is as it were a flood and swift current, consisting of the things that are brought to pass in the world. For as soon as anything hath appeared, and is passed away, another succeeds, 
and that also will presently out of sight. Whatsoever doth happen in the world is in the course of nature, as usual and ordinary as a rose in the spring and fruit in summer. Of the same nature is sickness and death, slander and lying in wait, and whatsoever else ordinarily doth unto fools use to be occasion either of joy or sorrow, that whatsoever it is that comes after, doth always very naturally, and as it were familiarly, follow upon that which was before. For thou must consider the things of the world, not as a loose independent number, consisting merely of necessary events, but as a discrete connection of things orderly and harmoniously disposed. There is then to be seen in the things of the world, not a bare succession, but an admirable correspondence and affinity. Let that of Heraclitus never be out of thy mind, that the death of earth is water, and the death of water is air, and the death of air is fire, and remember him also who was ignorant with a whither the way did lead, and how that reason being the thing by which all things in the world are administered, and which men are con yea, even as if any of the gods should tell thee, thou shalt certainly die to-morrow, or next day, thou wouldst not, except thou wert extremely base and pusillanimous. 6. Let it be thy perpetual meditation how many physicians who once looked so grim, and so theatrically shrunk their brows upon their patients, are dead and gone themselves. How many astrologers, after that in great ostentation they had foretold the death of some others, how many philosophers, after so many elaborate tracts and volumes concerning either mortality, run them over also, whom thou thyself, one after another, hast known in thy time to drop away. Such and such a one took care of such and such a one's burial, and soon after was buried himself. So one, so another, and all things in a short time. For herein lieth all indeed, ever to look upon all worldly things, as things for their continuance, that are but for a day, and for their worth, most vile. Thus must thou, according to truth and nature, truly consider how man's life is but for a very moment of time, and so depart meek and contented. Even as if a ripe olive Thou must be like a promontory of the sea, against which though the waves beat continually, yet it both itself stands, and about it are those swelling waves stilled and quieted. Fly! O oh, wretched I, to whom this mischance has happened! Nay, happy I, to whom this thing being happened, I can continue without grief, neither wounded by that, for as for this, it might have happened unto any man. But any man, having such a thing befallen him, could not have continued without grief. Why then should that rather be an unhappiness than this a happy? He ply. It is but an ordinary course one, yet it is a good effectual remedy against the fear of death for a man to consider in his mind the examples of such who greedily and covet what have they got more than they whose deaths have been untimely are not they themselves dead at the last as caditions fabius julianus lepidus or any other who in their life the whole space of any man's life is but little and as little as it is with what troubles with what manner of dispositions and in the society of how wretched a body must for if thou shalt look backward behold what an infinite chows of time doth present itself unto thee, and as infinite a chows, if thou shalt look forward. In that which is so infinite, what difference can there be between that which live but three days, and that which live three ages? Plie, let thy course ever be the most compendious way. The most compendious is that which is according to nature. That is, in all both words and deeds, ever to follow that which is most sound and perfect. For such a resolution will free a man from all trouble, strife, dissembling, and ostentation. The fifth book I. In the morning when thou findest thyself unwilling to rise, consider with thyself presently, it is to go about a man's work that I am stirred up. 
am I then yet unwilling to go about that for which I myself was born and brought forth into this world, or was I made for this, to lay me down and make much of myself? 